part of my job is to articulate for parents the degree to which gender is expansive and that it is certainly in our society defined in a very binary way of male or female. Uh, for some children, some people, regardless of age, that binary just does not apply. And so educating parents about the expansiveness of genders is very important. In my practice, what I will usually say is that there's no one way to be any gender. And I have this conversation with parents, and I have this conversation with children and teens, because I think we've internalized to some extent the messages that we receive about what it means to be a man, and what it means to be a woman. And there are no real scripts for what it means to be something other than a man or a woman. And as a result, I think there's a lot of trepidation around uh, that somewhat gray, unknown, undefined space. And what that looks like, at least in the context of therapy, is a parent who might feel anxious about a child who doesn't appear to be either identifying as male or female, but appears to be somewhat non-binary or outside that binary. And there's a sense among those parents that they must be going through a phase. To approach a child or a teenager with that lens is incredibly invalidating. Uh, and, and so we, we have to really kind of respect that identity, even though it may not be something that we're all that familiar with. And so some of the challenges that parents often present with uh, parents of toddlers is that they might see some gender nonconformity in their child and are projecting into the future that their child may be transgender. That's one track of gender development, uh, but there are many. And so sometimes working with families at that age is really around helping them listen to their child and really not so much build, uh, build meaning, such great meaning behind some of these expressions and behaviors, but to be patient and in some cases, um, for some parents, really staying in a space that can be very distressful for them, uh, a space that where they might question for sometimes months or years, is my child transgender or are these uh, behaviors not indicative of that? The role of a therapist in that case is to help that family to uh, maintain uh, affirmative uh, parenting, to help them to understand the difference between behaviors and identity, uh, and to also recognize that regardless of what the future may hold, what we do know is that when we are not affirming of children and their behaviors, uh, they don't do as well. In fact, they do quite poorly when they reach adolescence. And so that is our message uh, often with that group. For the adolescents that come in, I think some of the challenges especially those who maybe haven't had support up until the time they, they come into therapy or, or seek help. For them, there has been perhaps an experience of disaffirmation from their families or from their peers. And so in some cases, they've experienced a lot of rejection on account of uh, aspects of their gender, either identity or expression. And in other cases, uh, there has been some real severe psychological uh, challenges and conditions that have been the result of, unfortunately, some of the distress that they've experienced. Um, depression, higher rates of depression, a greater degree of suicidality, both ideation and attempts, uh, anxiety, a lot of social anxiety in particular I see in my practice. Uh, those are challenges that can be avoided um, in many respects when there aren't um, or when there are, excuse me, more affirmative approaches at home and even in therapy.